Hey guys, it's Joe, and in this video I'll be showing you the next part of the EXS24 sampler, which is loading in your own samples. So we've loaded up the blank sampler here, and if you click on the top right here where it says edit, it will open the sample window. Now here you can simply drag in your own samples and lay them out how you want, and for these examples I'll load in several base hits that I've made myself. So I've dragged them all in here, and as you can just about see at the bottom, these are the zones that they've loaded into. So if we hit C1, it'll play this sample, then C2, and then C3. So they're all divided by key range, which you can see and change here. You can adjust each of them by clicking on it and dragging up or down, or double clicking and typing what you want. Now as I recorded each of these, I know that each note is actually an E, but what the sampler can do is, if you play any other note, it will pitch shift it to that note. And you can change the starting note of each in key here, and it's good to make sure that this is the note of the original sound. So we'll change them all to E. Now at the top here, you have quite a few different parameters. In the mixer, you have volume, which can change the volume of each sample, and then panning to change between the left and right. You've also got some more in pitch, and you've got fine tuning here, so you can change this by cents, by plus or minus 50. And then course, which changes each note by a semitone. You've also got some playback options over here, where you've got pitch, one shot, and reverse. With pitch ticked, it'll change the pitch of each sample played, as I was explaining earlier. And if one shot is ticked, then it'll play the full length of the sample, regardless of how long you hold the key down for. and reverse, which will play the sample in reverse. A very useful function in this sampler is that you can get different samples to play depending on what velocity your key is hit. Now to do this, we'll need to group our samples. So we're going to group at the top here, create a new group, select all the samples we want in it, and drag them into it. Next, make sure that the output is group on each of them, and then go into view up here, and go down to velocity range and tick all of these so it's on on each sample. Now we drag all the samples so they're into the same zones and then we can select what sample will play at what velocity. So we'll go up here and make it so each sample is ascending and do it in roughly thirds. So here you have the low and high velocity range of each sample, low being that this will be the lowest value a key will be hit in order for it to play the sample and high being the highest value it can be hit for the key to play the sample. So make it 0 to 43, 44 to about 85, then 86 to 127. It's important that these don't overlap, otherwise more than one sample will play at the same time. So make sure the numbers are back to back like this. So if I were to play a note in the zone softly, then a bit firmer, then harder, and we're playing a different sample. This is extremely useful for when you're making your own drum sampler, so you can load in softer sounds for lower velocities and harder sounds for higher velocities. You've got to be careful not to spread out the notes over a zone that is too large, as what the sampler does is speed up or slow down the sample to change its pitch. So if you play a note that is recorded around middle C, and play a note that's over an octave away in distance, it can sound a bit silly. So just to show you an example, that's the original note. So the further away you get, the less it sounds like the original sound. You can also use the envelopes in the main screen to adjust your sounds, and I'll put a link in the description to my first video on how to use these. I hope you found this video useful, and if you have any questions, please leave a comment or contact me via my website. Thanks a lot for watching. Cheers.